Ladies and gentlemen, this is the YouTube channel vlog show of inspiration and realness. Also, this is the YouTube channel vlog show of positivity, personality, and fun. This is Eric Lima Shenanigans of 1977. And now the perpetrator of these shenanigans, Big Beefy E himself from his Big Beefy Man Cave in New Bedford, Massachusetts. Mr. Shenanigans himself and the two-time Chilling 3000 2022 End of the Year Awards winner, Eric M. Lima. Thank you very much, Mr. Announcer, sir. Well, hello there, everybody. Welcome to yet another episode of Eric Lima Shenanigans of 1977, episode 582. This is the Raw Event Center um, for, and this is the final Raw before Night of Champions coming up Saturday afternoon at 1 p.m. And um, this is what's going on. Cody Rhodes just arrived at the arena to kick off Monday Night Raw. But Brock Lesnar, and backstage, when Brock Lesnar attacks Cody Rhodes and injured his arm with a big empty beer keg. Paul Heyman addresses the crowd in Hershey, Pennsylvania. That's the where they're at. Saying that uh, Kevin Owens and Sami Zayn are going to lose those titles to Roman Reigns, Solo Sokoa. Sami Zayn and Kevin Owens, the tag the tag champs, interrupts Heyman, addresses the Hershey crowd. And then they said they were about to dress Imperium, and Imperium comes out. About to surround the ring, and then Matt Riddle comes out to aid Zayn and Owens. And then all three men clear the ring of Imperium and decided to, well, and he decided to bring it on. So there, and tonight, I think that main event is going to be a six man tag. Meanwhile, Byron Sack is trying to get a medical update of Cody Rhodes on, from Adam Pierce. Adam Pierce says, I can't say anything right now. And then Bronson Reed, uh, before the matchup, uh, cut a promo on Ricochet, saying that Ricochet cost him to win that battle royal. To become the number one contender for the Intercontinental Championship. And Ricochet and Bronson Reed did go one on one, but then Bronson Reed beat Ricochet with the tsunami. Heck of a matchup. Like lightning speed and a little bit of power, but sometimes speed does kill. Uh, Kathy Kelly interviewed uh, Apollo Crews, who made his return to Monday Night Raw. But then Dominic Mysterio, oh, it's Mommy's interview time. That mullet-headed goomball and his girlfriend looking like the Joker from Batman. You know, what me worry? Uh -huh, that's Alfred E. Newman. Anyways, and Ray Ripley decided to issue a challenge to Natalia for a matchup at Night of Champions. So, looks like that match could, could go down. Corey Gay Graves interviewed Seth Rollins um, again. Sit down and interview. And they're going to continue on about Roman Reigns. He says he loves Roman Reigns, but the man he's become, you know... I don't like him. I don't respect him, he says. And he says, you know, for him to hold the Universal title is selfish. Thank you, Seth freaking Rollins. You are the man, and I respect you. He says he wants to be world champion. He wants to give... He says him holding that title is taking opportunities away from everybody. Thank you, Ro Thank you, Seth freaking Rollins. I think that's what the fans are trying to say. You were speak. And I'll tell you what. He says he's got respect for AJ Styles. Could be a heck of a matchup, he said. And... And because in AJ Styles, he respect AJ Styles respects him. Then um, Byron Saxon trying to interview Finn Balor and Damian Priest. Finn Balor's got a match against Shins Shinsuke Nakamura. Damian Priest starts yelling at uh, you know, yelling at um, you know Damian Priest in in um, starting yelling at Byron Saxon in Spanish. Finn Balor says, "Hold it down. We'll deal with everything." So. Zoe Stark cut a promo uh, vignette about wanting to be the best. Then you got Candice LeRae going one on one with Zoe Stark. It was a heck of a matchup. Nikki Cross came rushing down the ringside, and then when when, when uh, Candice LeRae fell on the outside ring, Zoe Stark, um, uh, I mean, ring Nikki Cross went over and hugged hugged her. Zoe Stark knocked down both of them, and uh, n uh, knocked down both of them. But then she ended up winning the match with the Z360. Uh, Byron Sexton interviewed Mustafa Ali. He said, I can't, you know, I can't put it into words. And uh, Brock Lesnar interrupts him because he was talking about uh, Mustafa Ali. was about to talk about his title match against Gunter. Brock Lesnar interrupts him. Was about to say, he says, get a life, kid. And then he comes out, dresses the crowd, saying Cody's not going to fight him and all that. I'll issue an open challenge. Anybody wants to fight me, nine champions. Cody Rose comes out with an arm in a sling. And what I'm watching right now, currently... Um, Adam Pierce and two referees tried to stop him. They went at it, and then Brock Lesnar grabbed Cody Rhodes, put him. Uh, they both fought. 
Lesnar um, possibly break Cody Rhodes' arm, hitting him in it with a Kimura lock. And right now, moments ago, Cody Rhodes is in pain. So I will uh, address the rest of this uh, uh, of this event as uh, it goes on. So so far, that's the first hour of it, and we're going to go to the second hour when we get a chance. So uh, see you around. All right, then we're going to continue on the second hour of Monday Night Raw. is almost uh, c- complete, so I figured I would do go quickly what's going on. After, you know, after the Lesnar, um, Lesnar and uh, Cody Rhodes fight, Alfred Academy took on the Viking Raiders, and thanks to Maxine Dupree, of all people, who outsmarted Valhalla in a chase around the ring, Alfred Academy does pick up the victory over the Viking Raiders. Chad Gable s- says she is sensing... Uh, uh, Chad Gable senses that you know Maxine Dupree could be a huge asset for um, for the team. Byron Saxon tries to get a word with Cody, uh, more word on Cody Rhodes. What happened? And then um, you know Adam Pierce is trying to you know trying to talk to Cody Rhodes. Cody Rhodes is angry. He's telling everybody to get out of his locker room. He's ticked off. And I'll tell you one thing right now. And if I were if I were Adam Pierce, stay out of the way. Then, in a dream matchup, Shinsuke Nakamura went one-on-one with Finn Balor. Now, Shinsuke almost had the match won until Damian Priest got involved. Shinsuke attacks him. Finn Balor took advantage of the situation, hits the coup de grace. One, two, three. In that matchup. Then, next up is... Um, now, Now the women's tag team titles will be on the line, but Liv Morgan and Raquel Rodriguez had... To relinquish them because Liv Morgan suffered a shoulder injury at the, uh, the uh, during their tag team title defense against the team of, of Bailey and Dakota Kai to get damage control. You gotta be kidding me! That one, well, the original was awesome. Anyways, um, then I so it'll be a it'll be they'll be on the line in a fatal four way. Raquel Rodriguez and a partner of her choice. Uh, we'll, we'll be we'll, we'll be facing Sonya Deville and Ch- uh, Chelsea Green, Ronda Rousey, and Shayna Baszler, and Bailey and Dakota Kai, uh, not D- Dakota Kai, and Bailey and the lovely Io Sky of Damage Control for the women for the vacant women's tag team championships. Now you've been wondering, hey, you still got the NXT women's tag team champs on SmackDown? Alba Fire and uh, Isla Dawn. If I were them, I'd be keeping an eye on that matchup. So, um, Raquel Rodriguez went one-on-one with Sonya Deville. Rod- Raquel Rodriguez picked up the victory. Chelsea Green was attacking um, Raquel Rodriguez, and so Sonya Deville gets right in. Then Shotzi gets involved, and now Shotzi will be the partner of Raquel Rodriguez. So, I think Shotzi wants a shot to win uh, some gold around her waist. I, I, you know what? Hats off to Miss Shotzi. So, that will be a heck of a matchup. So, uh, one of the referees, I believe Sean Bennett, I think it was, um, um, did talk to Adam Pierce about Cody. He says, Cody's angry. And Adam Pierce says, I got to address this. Trish Stratus, though, interrupts Pierce, talks about the contract signing. He said, uh, no, you know, I want a no-touch policy. But he said, you know what? No, no, no thanks. And says, thank you, Trish, and everything else. So, but what, 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 are we, uh, what are we witnessing here? Uh, basically... Uh, basically, it looks like the contract signing is up next. It looks like uh, Matt Riddle is doing a little promo, so we're going to see what he's saying. Let's go, bro. Alrighty then, after the uh, Matt Riddle uh, promo uh, vignette, we're going to conclude, we're, we're conclude this video. Uh, contract signing between Becky Lynch and Trish Stratus. Trish Stratus thinks that you know Becky Lynch is a coward and all that. And Trish Strat, you know, and, you know, Becky Lynch said this, I'm going to humiliate you. You think barking like a dog is bad? Kind of a little reference when Vince McMahon made Trish bark like a dog back in the day. And then uh, when Trish tried to uh, turn the table over after signing the contract, Becky Lynch just backed up. So, and Trish walked away and, you know, so nothing major happened at that point. So, um... Anna Pierce was talking on the phone about Cody Rhodes, who that person was. We don't know. And Byron Saxton interviewed Shotzi and Raquel Rodriguez. And 
They were excited. Shotzi's going to have you back. I got a lot of respect and all that. You know what? And then, Shot- and then Raquel Rodriguez says, well, I have my partner. And we're going to walk out tag team champions. Apollo Crews went one-on-one with Dominic Mysterio. Dom Dom. Or I call him Dum Dum. Give me Gum Gum. And Mysterio. And uh, Ray Ripley got involved in the matchup. That cost Apollo Crews his first match back on Monday Night Raw. Losing to Dominic Mysterio. AJ Styles had a promo uh, vignette on being the world heavyweight champion. Looks like he was going to challenge Seth Rollins. And Corey Graves interviews Seth Rollins for the final part. He says, what makes you um, think for the what the world tells you is time for change, he says. So Seth Rollins felt in his heart that he wants to be the world heavyweight champion. got to respect him for that. Next week, Money in the Bank qualifying matches will begin for both the men and the women. This is going to be a more interesting situation now. It all depends after Night of Champions. As you know, there will be a triple main event. The tag team titles will be on the line at Night of Champions. Kevin Owens, Sami Zayn against Sol Sokoa and the Univer- undisputed Universal Champ, Roman Reigns. Uh, meanwhile, uh, Cody Rose goes one-on-one with Brock Lesnar. Uh, that all depends on what happens afterwards. Also, uh, the World Heavyweight title will be on the line tournament finals. AJ Styles, Seth Rollins. Going one on one. The match is official. Becky Lynch goes one on one with Hall of Famer Trish Stratus. There'll be two championship matches on the women's division. Uh, Bianca Belair and Oscar is one. The other for the SmackDown Women's Championship, Ray Ripley versus Natalia. Then you got the Intercontinental title on the line. Gunter to defend against Mustafa Ali. Meanwhile, the six man tag team match was happening. Uh, Matt Riddle, Kevin Owens, and Sami Zayn uh, faced the team of Imperium. That would be Giovanni Vinci, Ludwig Kaiser, and the Intercontinental Champion, Gunta. And Owens, Zayn, and Riddle picked up the win to carry their momentum into Night of Champions. But before that, they have to encounter their challengers at the KO show on SmackDown. Then, and then Cody Rhodes was about to pack stuff up. He says, I don't need help. Knock at the door. It was none other than the game, Triple H. He was trying to talk, talk to Cody Rose, talk him out of the matchup, and Cody Rose was, what would you do if you are in this position? You would fight. And so, I'm going to fight Brock Lesnar and Night of Champions. That's what Cody Rhodes said. Triple H then said, you know what? He's like, he smiled. He, Cody pat on the knee, pat on the back. Cody's going to go. He is going to go, injured arm or not. I think Brock Lesnar just really ticked off Cody Rhodes. Well, tomorrow night, as you know, it will be the go-home show before um, uh, before NXT Battleground. That will be this Sunday, right after Night of Champions, as the Women's Championship Tournament um, semifinals continue on. Lyra Valkyria going one-on-one with uh, with Cora Jade on the other side of the bracket. Tiffany Stratton going one-on-one with Roxanne Perez. Winners, The two winners of those matches will face each other at NXT Battleground for the Women's Championship. Wouldn't be surprised if Cora Jade and Roxanne Perez come out of that matchup. Oh, and by the way, flopping does not help you win. I said the Lakers are down 0-3. Bree DaCosta, if that's your real name. I highly doubt it is, but still. But the Lakers are only three. LeBron's flops did nothing. Just to get that squared away. So that's it. That's all the time we have on this show. Episode 582 of Eric Lehman's Shenanigans of 1977 is complete. The final Raw before Night of Champions. We'll see what happens tomorrow night on NXT. So until the next episode comes rolling around, Mr. Announcer, please take us home. That is all for today's episode of the show. This is Mr. Lima speaking for Eric Lima Shenanigans of 1977. A big beefy E, do it for Bob Saget production. And in association with a sweet bowl for raving dingleberries, telepictures, and distribution. Thank you for watching another great episode of Eric Lima Shenanigans of 1977. Until the next episode, goodbye for now.